Today's just one of those days that I don't have any motivation. I don't feel like doing anything. So I don't know where we're going to go with this. But a couple of quick updates. Let me not smash the door on the lift. Did get the Kirky. That's all mounted. I actually need to move it forward a little bit. I'm not really sure. I might move it forward one hole. I mean, it's comfortable where it's at. I just think a little forward would be better. And then I got to remake this brace to bolt it right there. I mean, it doesn't really move, but that brace is important and then i got the uh meth kit and the bump box in place i got most of the feed lines made still got to run the return which i got all the stuff in for that and started making it put a new radiator hose up top so it like whoops around there perfectly that's all pretty good uh let's not talk about that right now and then we've got uh, let's see, the Mustang is no longer here, but the Camaro is back here. Scott did a killer job modifying this hot side to work with uh, these turbos. And this is just a little four liter with a single eBay turbo, don't worry about that. Uh, I started to pull the Turbo 350 apart because I was gonna, I just wanted to inspect it before throwing it in here. I think <laughs> after looking at the fluid, that it should definitely be rebuilt. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. It just looks a little weird. And then big shout out to Bobby O for these seats. If you recall, I had some cutlass seats in here, which worked fine, but they were cutlass seats. These seats are actually out of a Monte Carlo and they match the gray interior. So that's cool. So this thing's that one little step closer. Honestly, all I want to do, I don't want to work on anything else. I just want to get this Monte Carlo together, which sucks because there's... Just a bunch of other stuff I gotta do. <laughs> it really does not need much though. Like the engine already runs. I just need to put the fuel tank back in it, run the hoses, um, run the power wire to the fuel pump, put the trans in. I got the converter, got the drive shaft, bolt the shifter in and run the cable, electric fans, and then this is pretty much a running and driving car. So it's like, it's so close, which is why I just wanted to like slam it together, but. You know, it is what it is. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about to waste time? Uh, we can talk about the RX-7 real quick, because last week I took it to my buddy Scott, who did the hot side on the Camaro there, and we traded labor. I replaced some lifters and uh, battery and stuff in his Yukon, just got it running and driving pretty well for him. And for me, what he did was fix the wiring for the lights in this because it's not something I wanted to do. So, pop-ups and the uh, lights do work. And then, blinker. And you might be able to hear, you might be able to hear the fan for the trans cooler going. So, that's all wired up. I did end up ordering a fuel cell for it that should fit under the floor so I can just weld a little deal to it and use the stock fuel door. And then once that's all done, the car actually will be done. Probably the one thing that got complained about on the car more than anything else was the intake manifold. Because it was painted red. Uh, Andre, the guy I got it from, started to sand it down to repaint it. And uh, I just never did anything with it. So it was half red, half like bare aluminum. And now, there you go. It is wrinkle black, and he went through and cleaned off the raised section where it says BBK SSI. And he wrapped the exhaust. So under here, pretty much done. Everything's looking good. Hell yeah, brother. It's funny when you work on something so often, you get so close, and then you're at this point of, like, I just want it done. I don't want to see it. I'm tired of working on it. I just want the thing done. So... That's not really where I was at with the RX-7, but it's like I just, I had zero ambition to fix the tail lights and wiring and stuff on that. Like all it was was the wiring for the lights. The car ran and drove fine. I just, it was whatever. And for the most part, he said it was pretty simple. There was a ground and half the harness going to the tail lights was cut. So, uh, you know, thankfully it was a somewhat easy fix. So I think, Real quick on this, just to get it over with, I need to run the return line. It'll join up to this 
massive chungus right here. And, uh, and then the fuel system's basically done aside from the injectors. They should show up any day now. Uh, and then I need to get the alternator and power steering bracket on this fatty. And then this thing's real close. I just need to run the wire to the fuel pump, the switched wire, and then really not a ton left after that. So I'm going to try to get this all knocked out relatively quick. And uh, I don't know, low energy gang. We'll see what happens. All right, I've got to run over to my dad's place real quick. I got to take some parts over there and steal some parts from over there to bring them back here for the uh, olds. So. God, I love this truck. Alright, this is where we see how fast this pig is. Because I know right to the bottom of that hill there, right there, is about an eighth of a mile. So, let's pump up the hydro boost, stall it up a little bit. God, this thing shifts good. About like 62 in the 8, we'll call it. I mean, realistically, uh, like 5,500, 6,000 pound truck, that's not too bad. With a bone stock ass 454. The trans ship's good though. You know, knock on wood, that thing's nice. So, quick little story about this little section of road. There's two fields here that deer love to hang out in. I was riding my Electroglide uh, Harley one day. I sold that, kind of wish I hadn't. Um, and there was a car parked on the side of the road. It was getting dark. It was probably seven, eight o'clock. And I was going, I was leaving my dad's, which is down here on the left, going home. And there was a car parked on the side of the road back here a little bit. And I've lived in this area last like 20 years, give or take, 20, 25 years. And so I know there's deer everywhere. So at night, especially on a bike, I always take it slow. This is 55, typically I'll do about 40, give or take. Uh, but there was a car on the side of the road, like I've said 80 times now. And I come up to him, I slow down a little bit, doing about 35, I start to go around him. Right in front of that car, well not right, probably 20 feet in front of that car, a fucking deer comes out of the ditch. I smack it broadside and lay the bike on its side. That was not a fun night luckily both I wasn't too fucked up and the bike wasn't too fucked up so that was just a quick little funny story you know haha -ha, motorcycle crashes hitting deer always fun so I needed to bring this radiator hose over for a Mustang that's in the garage I'll show you guys in a second uh, finally got the parts for this thing got the radiator and injectors and uh, the alternator plug the radiator it's the old alternator there so should be able to get back to work on this real soon as soon as we get caught up on everything else this is not our Mustang this belongs to uh, David who I actually got the white s10 from that now belongs to herb at Michigan muscle car garage and if you haven't already go check out herbs channel I'll try to remember to link that in the description too because that s10 is gonna be nuts he just had a full 10 or 12 point, I think a 12 point cage welded in, looks really killer. And he got a sick big block for that thing, so it's gonna haul ass. But yeah, this is a really nice Fox 4i T-top car with a nice little LS stabbed in it. We're just wiring it up for him. It's going pretty well. Kind of a pain in the ass to get to the back of the motor for all the sensors and the grounds and everything and hide the harness so it doesn't look too terrible. And then it has an ADE, so just the tunnel's so tight. But yeah, I had to bring this hose over to try it for the upper hose here. See if we can make it work. Which it looks like it should work, which is awesome. And then because I know people are gonna ask, updates on Jack Black. This thing, we got it running really good. The issue with the throttle sticking was uh, these arms right here. Is that focusing? These arms right here on both carbs were like bent. So when you would like, when it would transfer, it would grind into itself. 
So got that bent back. Everything's nice and clean. That's all taken care of. He ended up, because we did have the two-step wired to the brake switch, and I'll go over the brake switch in a second just because why it didn't work. But he ended up just drilling a hole through this way and then up through the bottom to run the wires and just put a switch there. And he's just going to let off the foot brake at the same time as this. Just treat it like a trans brake kind of. So yeah, that's some of the stuff we got going on here. We were busting hump on this the last couple days trying to get it wired up and make it look pretty nice. Um, should we talk about the Caprice outside? We probably should. There have been a handful of people curious about that in the last videos. So this is the box top Caprice that has been in the background of videos for the past couple months. Well, maybe longer than that. But it's pretty clean. It's wrapped. It's actually a black car, but it's all wrapped white. Uh, what are these 24s or 26s? 24s. And uh, yeah, this is whew, this is here for an LS swap. But you know, we've already got so many others going on. This one's just waiting. For some reason, it had to be brought up here to wait. I guess. But yeah. Pretty clean interior, and I already asked, the car's expensive, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> but here's the thing that's interesting. This is a Chevy Caprice, right? Check that out. That doesn't belong here. So, yeah, it. Uh, they wanted to LS swap because this thing was running. Oh, hey, what's up, B? Wasp, what are you doing? You're not gonna make yourself at home. Oh, I got him. You're dead, bitch. So yeah, this is here because they want it LS swapped because this thing was running like absolute dog poo. And uh, we got bored the other day and basically the timing was all screwed up. The car probably needs to be rebuilt, but the firing order was bonk because this is an old and, you know. Uh, but we got it to sit and idle pretty good. It's still missing, but it's like night and day compared to how it was where it just... You know, and I was going to take it for a drive down the road just because I was curious and then it ran out of gas. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the story on the white Caprice here. Alright, just got back, put the uh, power steering and alternator bracket on the olds. Everything's fitting pretty well. I used the Dirty Dingo adapter to use the stock old school GM line to the modern truck pump. Always works great, just had to rebend the thing a little bit. Fits perfect, it's out of the way of the steering link, out of the way of the belt. Just had to, this was facing the other way, just had to turn around bend it. That'll work great. Uh, the only thing now is this fuel line doesn't fit. Which at first I was like, dang, that sucks. But what I'm going to do is put the uh, plug up here, put that back there, and then just make a new line that runs to there. That way I don't have to have lines like hanging all over the place. It'll be hidden under the intake. Still work just fine. Jesus Christ, <laughs> there's people over there cutting the trees and I just heard one of them rip a nasty burp. <laughs> Good Lord. Just had to change a couple things. I thought I had a stock uh, truck fan belt laying around, but clearly I don't because I've looked everywhere I can think I would have put it and I don't know where it is, which isn't a huge deal. Those are only a few bucks. So yeah, I need to pop this out and I'm not sure where I can angle that so that it clears everything. Typically on like turbo motors, you'll pull this out and tap it and put a plug in it or uh, can weld it up. But since this is naturally aspirated, I'm just going to run that to the valve covers like it would have been stock. Just got to put it in at a angle that clears everything. That's not it. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. We'll play around with that a little bit. This whole trying to get stuff done with no motivation and a sore back really sucks. I, probably going on like two weeks of a pulled muscle in my back, and I just haven't had the time to just sit and recover because there's two cars here that aren't mine that need to get done and then there's the three at my dad's place so that's five plus my three are uh, projects for the channel so those constantly need some sort of work 
just to keep these videos going. I'm not typically one to complain, but man, these uh, these last couple weeks have just been exhausting. I think I'm gonna go in, wash my hands, grab a snack, chill out for a second, then come back out and probably start making the new fuel line for this. 